The Manchester United team is unchanged. Mickey Thomas is still troubled by a thigh injury, so at number 11, Ashley Grimes plays in his normal place on the left side of midfield. And for Bristol City, this is the team which produced their best performance of the season on Tuesday night when they beat Everton and won two much-needed points. Joe Royal is at number nine, despite being transfer listed, and the Bristol substitute is Kevin Mabbott, who in the corresponding match last season scored a hat-trick here at Old Trafford in Bristol's 3-1 win. The referee today is George Tyson from Sunderland. Bristol City's win in midweek was their first in 12 games, so can they sustain that form now, having drawn at Nottingham Forest, by the way, in their last away match. Bristol in white shirts and black shorts, that was Jerry Gow. And that was turned back by Pritchard, Sweeney trying to save it. And Cashley did. Manchester United in their normal red shirts, defending the Stretford end in the first half. Jeff Merrick for Bristol. Joe Royal the target, good header. Fitzpatrick is wearing number eight, this is Ritchie though. Trevor Tainton. Copper was in the way. Ritchie. That's Tom Ritchie of Bristol City. The Manchester United substitute today is Andy Ritchie. Jerry Sweeney. Pritchard. Tom Ritchie. Plenty of Bristol players forward. That's Tainton on the overlap. And Joe Royal was unmarked at the far post. Oh, and a mistake by McQueen puts Bailey in trouble and Fitzpatrick shoots and wide. Gordon McQueen, cold at the start of the match maybe, seemed to lose concentration. And in making that mistake, he committed Gary Bailey to coming out and diving at the feet. And when it went free, Tony Fitzpatrick, who's yet to score for Bristol City since coming from St Mirren at the beginning of the season, wasn't far away. Makari and a corner. Well, Bristol City must be careful about Gordon McQueen coming up for corners. He's scored seven goals this season for Manchester United. And as Ashley Grimes attempts to bend this ball in, McQueen has gone right onto the goal line. Flicked on as well, and in came Joe Jordan at the back. And Jordan makes it 1-0. Congratulates him. And Manchester United in front of a set piece. Ashley Grimes hit the corner in, pierces to the near post, flicked on, and Jordan coming in at the back scored his own seventh goal of the season. And while the Bristol defenders, or one or two of them anyway, were looking for McQueen. It was Jordan who took advantage. And McElroy's now started a run from his own half, and so has Koppel. And so has Jordan. It was his header. And it was Tainton who turned it back, having tracked McElroy all the way. That was Buchan. This is Jordan. And it's Buchan again. Beaten by Gow for the moment. Here's McQueen. <laughs> Coming on one of his runs. This is Wilkins. Nice back heel to Grimes. Manchester United have seven players in attack here. Four awaiting in the penalty area. Wilkins. McElroy's flick. Makari. Makari on again. Offside, I think. Wilkins shot. And I think he was offside anyway. McElroy saw that well and seized it well. Hopple. But his momentum took him on there, really. Makari's in the centre. Oh, McElroy! Two-nil. The easiest goal McElroy will ever score. And Lou Makari should get even more of the credit than him. Koppel made it possible in the first place, he went past one man, and his momentum carried him past the second. 
the cross went in, Macaris header beat the goalkeeper, hit the post, and McElroy just prodded the ball over the line. Just seven minutes to half-time, Manchester United go two goals in front. And Bristol City, who began the match in quite confident mood, with Tom Ritchie on the near post, found room nicely. Pritchard, oh, that's wasted. So is that in the end by Nico. Manchester United's biggest victories uh, so far this season, by the way, here have been 5-0 over Norwich and 4-0 over Stoke. And they lead Bristol by two in the first half. Here's Whitehead. I should think the Manchester United manager, Dave Sexton, will be very satisfied to see his side putting away what may appear to be simple chances, but it goes to show that when the ball is in the air, defenders have just got to stick to their marking jobs, and they've failed to do that here, the Bristol players in defence, and they've been punished twice. McQueen. again Jordan oh here's Grimes Tainton was with him and Grimes again looking for Houston this Pritchard Gow Sweeney. Oh, it was McQueen that uh, left Sweeney on the floor. And Bristol City badly needing to get one of those goals back before half time to stay in the match. Here's Ritchie. Rogers. The Royal. away by Jordan, here's Koppel, this could work for United but Koppel's got Macari and McElroy, the same two players in the middle as before, and fouled by Whitehead the speed with which Manchester United break was very evident then because it was Joe Jordan, the centre forward, who actually cleared the ball from his own penalty area but even without him up front, they still had three attackers in good positions Koppel who made the break and Macari and McElroy who were waiting in the centre. Jordan coming in. What a tangle. Oh, it's Merrick and goal! Jeff Merrick put the ball in his own net. What a tragedy for Bristol City. Jordan's physical presence caused the problem. He came in with his marker. The ball span loose. And poor Jeff Merrick, unaccountably, I suppose, turned the ball over his own goal line. Referee having a word with Jerry Gow. And also waving uh, Joe Royal away. Poor Bristol City are now in a desperate position. They're three goals behind. We still haven't reached half-time, and nothing has gone right for them. The own goal compounding a first half riddled with defensive errors. Here's Tainton. Pritchard. Royal. Whose two bursts have actually caused the last two goals, Makari. And it 
was casually coming to meet Koppel. And Manchester United, who so often this season have won by one goal, are now in the healthy position of having three to spare. Makari. Nickel. Jordan's in there again, and again he got a foot to it. Royal. Ritchie. Pritchard. Royal again. this first half we've actually reached the 45 minute mark it's just time added on for stoppages here's Nickel though oh, look at the space on the left he played it rather a long way forward but it's Grimes chasing and a corner has looked so unsettled, so disturbed that this corner is perhaps the last thing they want to face at the moment. McQueen on the line again. Goalkeeper coming to meet McQueen and the referee blows the whistle for half-time. And Manchester United, the sideline second in the first division, make Bristol City's relegation problems seem all too real. Joe Jordan starting things off with a six-minute header following a corner. McElroy, a simple goal after 38 minutes, and an own goal by Jeff Merrick two minutes before half-time. Several times as the player was about to make contact. Jordan causing problems again. Here's McElroy. Wilkins has made a run through the centre. Grimes. Makari near post. Jordan! They're appealing for offside, but the goal has been given. And Joe Jordan gets his second. And you can't ignore little Lou Macari, even when the ball is in the air. It was a good build-up by Manchester United. McElroy involved on the left. The ball played into the near post. Macari with the flick on. And Jordan, once again coming in from beyond, applied the finishing touch. Three minutes into the second half. Manchester United 4, Bristol City 0. United now needing one goal to equal their season's best of five against Norwich. Foul by McQueen on Royal. Sun shining and casting long shadows on the pitch, even in late February. Not a very bright day for the team struggling against relegation. Merrick takes the kick for them. Here's Gow, though. Oh, he did. He got something back for Bristol there, did Jerry Gow. That was really well struck as Royal competed in the air and the ball bounced back and free. Gow's volley was just too high. Other than that, it's been a fairly quiet afternoon for Gary Bailey. Makari. Oh. Popple. Grimes pulling away. Jordan. Oh, hit the post. The woodwork deprived Jordan of a hat trick. But what a fine move. The ball knocked across to Ashley Grimes, whose header first time was beautifully placed for Jordan. So was his. It beat the diving Cashley, but it hit the post. Two things, and the referee wants a word with Clive Whitehead, who he spoke to earlier about dissent. And indeed, it looks as though Whitehead's being booked.
So now we have Makari dropping, I should think, more into the midfield and Richie and Jordan, the new strike force. Here's Nickel. Just to get the Richies absolutely clear for you, that's uh, Andy Richie of Manchester United and the Bristol City number 10 is Tom Richie. In the meantime, Bristol City themselves want to make a substitution. Kevin Mabbott, who scored a hat-trick here last season and went home with the match ball, is coming on in place of Joe Royal. They're chanting uh, reject at Joe Royal because he used to play for Manchester City, but in the meantime, Mabbott is the Bristol number 12. Here's Jerry Gow. Mabbott, who's taken Royal's place at centre-forward, finds Tainton. Whitehead joined the attack for Bristol City. This is Sweeney, though. That's Whitehead flicking it on, and Tom Ritchie came in behind and was tackled by Ray Wilkins and looked for a penalty, which he didn't get. Crossed by Fitzpatrick, clearance by Nickel. And a chance for Manchester United to break with Jordan. Andy Ritchie on the far side, couple in the middle. That's not a bad ball, there's Ritchie. Cockle couldn't quite get there, even at full stretch. Andy Ritchie found a good position there, and he applauds the man who supplied the cross, Joe Jordan, who picked him out quite superbly. It was a lovely ball from Jordan, because it really tempted the defender, yet it was too far away for him to intercept, and it gave Ritchie the chance to get his effort in, and Koppel couldn't quite apply the finishing touch. Koppel seen plenty of the ball today and used it well Wilkins making a run now through the inside right position oh he's got it and was held back by Rogers. free kick mistake by the big centre half and he could only atone for it by pulling Wilkins shirt Jordan's there not quite and Richie couldn't make it either well Jordan must be wondering whether he's ever going to get the hat trick He's hit the post once, he won the ball in the air again there, and still, it wouldn't go in. Full play by Houston. And time for a <laughs> more humorous side of the game. Whitehead, Pritchard, there goes Mabbott, and it was cleared by Nicol to Koppel. Well, Richie did well to get a touch from that, he took a fairly heavy hammering as he did so. The referee decided it was fair enough from Rogers. the play goes on. And here's Fitzpatrick for Bristol City with a chance to get something going, they've got four men forward. Tom Ritchie, nice turn by him, and Makari on his back, and still suffering from that last challenge is Andy Ritchie. It's Beckford end, with their team four goals up, and the substitute apparently recovered. Tom Ritchie that's aimed at Mabbott and he's got there too Pritchard shot good save by Bailey Mabbott and deflected well why have Manchester United kept so many clean sheets because of Gary Bailey's form largely Pritchard and Whitehead joined the attack there to get the header in but that was a very good instinctive save by the England under-21 goalkeeper. Ritchie turning his man well, Mabbott in there. And when the shot came, Bailey was just in the right place, having come off his line, to narrow the angle and beat it out. The follow-up shot deflected by a defender. And the red 
referee blows the time and the roar which goes up says that Manchester United's championship bid is by no means over. On a day when Liverpool were given a difficult match, Manchester United made theirs look fairly easy. Joe Jordan got two of the goals and was a permanent threat to Bristol City, who themselves will have suffered with that defeat. They've now gone six away matches without scoring and they're anchored there in the bottom three. But Manchester United, who had their critics this season, just go on winning their games when they can, and this one they won pretty convincingly.